Hi, I'm Eric Siegel with Kit Bash Survival, and today we're going to be checking out a good one. This is the SE Large Mess Tin Survival Kit. I've already checked out two other SE Survival Kits on this channel, the Mini Survival Tin and the Pocket Survival Kit. And so this is the next step up from those. And then of course above this, they've got the Advanced Survival Kit, and we'll be checking that out at a later date. Now, the large Mess 10 Survival Kit is not cheap. It runs about $200, give or take, depending on where you buy it. I definitely think SE Survival Kits are cut above most others. And, you know, it's an example of you get what you pay for. Usually when you buy one of their kits, you get better quality components. Anyway, let's go ahead and open it up. It comes in this white cardboard box. And then we've got this bag around it. Take that out. So the kit has this black ranger band around it to hold it together and it has the SE Knives website address on it. And then they've got this vinyl tape around the edge for waterproofing. It's a pretty good size. Let's measure it. So the kit itself measures about oh just under six and a quarter by four by two and a half. And then let's go ahead and weigh it while we're at it. So it comes in at right at one pound eight ounces, just under one pound eight ounces. So we'll go ahead and take off the Ranger Band and we'll save this because this can be considered part of the kit. It's actually got two web addresses on there, seknives.com and randallsadventure.com. And this handle swings down like that and we've got this vinyl tape around the edge so let me find where the edge is there it is and just like the ranger band we don't want to throw away this tape because for one thing when i repack the kit i'm gonna reuse the tape and also in a survival situation, a couple feet of vinyl tape could be very important. So let's go ahead and pop the top. All right, so front and center, we've got an SE knife. This is an SE Kandaroo. Nice little knife. And this alone is about a $50 knife. So that's what I'm talking about. They have a lot of name brand stuff in here. Rather than some cheap Chinese knife, hey, it's made by SE, why not have an SE knife in the kit? Very nice, and it's got a little sheath, snaps in there, very nice. Then we've got another name brand item, a Victorinox Hiker. Not some cheap Swiss Army knife knockoff, a real Swiss Army knife. The Hiker has two blades, a large blade and a small blade. Then it's got a can opener with a screwdriver tip. And then it's got a bottle opener with a screwdriver tip and a wire stripper down there. And then on the back side, it's got a Phillips head screwdriver and a punch tool. It's very nice. Victorinox Hiker. Then we've got a ferro rod and striker. Another brand name striker, Endure. I've got an Endure survival kit in my collection. It's pretty good. So a massive ferro rod there and a nice striker. Oh yeah. So good ferro rod. Then we've got A Randall's Adventure and Training Signal Mirror. Very nice quality mirror with a little lanyard on it. And it's got instructions on the back for how to use it. And let's see here. Here's another name brand item. This is a Sunto Compass. This is similar to the one that was in the SE Pocket Survival Kit, the Sunto A10. So it's a good capable compass. It's not the best compass in the world, but it's certainly better than the cheap button compasses that are in most survival kits. 
This is about $20 on Amazon if you go and buy one of these on your own. Up next, we've got a Best Glide ASC Survival Fishing Kit Basic version. I've already done a review on this very kit on this channel, so I'm not going to open this one up. If you want to check out the contents, I'll put a link to that review in this video. Then we've got some duct tape. Pretty good amount of it. We've got a whistle. Yep, sounds good. It's an Acme whistle. Then we've got a jar of water purification tablets. This is pretty cool. Rather than just a few, we've got a whole jar. So how many are in here? Let's see. 50 tablets. 50 water purification tablets. That's pretty darn cool. And two tablets will purify one quart of water. So with 50 tablets, that means we can purify 25 quarts of water. Not bad at all. Then we've got some paracord. I'm not gonna take this out, but it looks like a pretty good supply. It's not 550 paracord. This is the smaller type. I believe it's the 275, 330 seconds inch paracord. Very nice. We've got a whole bunch of cotton tender pieces. Looks like 10 pieces. Not bad at all. We've got a one liter Whirlpack water bag to go with those water purification tablets. Then we've got some safety matches, Endure safety matches made in the UK. And these are wind and waterproof matches. So basically storm matches. And there's a whole bunch in there. I don't know how many, but probably at least 20. Very cool, another name brand item. Then we've got this, which I'm guessing is probably, yeah. So this is a patch material with two needles to allow you to patch something if you need to, pretty cool. Then we've got some snare wire, brass snare wire. Then we've got two of these lights, bright strike. And the way these work is they're green, they flash like that, they flash slower, and then they're steady. Pretty cool. Fast, slow, steady. And there's two of them. And they have sticky back on the rear side so you can peel this off and stick these to anything you want. Very cool. Now I've read that the reason these have green lights and not white lights is because the green lights are very good at night for reading maps and stuff like that. So very cool. You get two of these bright strike lights. Then we've got a Fresnel lens for starting a fire. There it is. And they've got some ground air signals on the back and some basic survival tips as well. Then we've got some more basic survival tips and a ruler and some ground to air signals and some measurement conversions as well meters to feet miles to kilometers and so forth the next item is this right in the rain waterproof notepad so the notepad opens up like that and then you've got a generous supply of waterproof paper pretty nice now this right in the rain waterproof pad is also included in the se pocket survival kit but what's not included is this collection of cards on the back. They've got these fastened on here with a Chicago screw. So let's take our Swiss Army knife and we'll put away most of the tools except for the screwdriver. And we'll go ahead and loosen up this screw and get those cards off so we can check them out. All right, there we go. And that detaches the cards. And so here we go. Now, most of these cards come in handy when you're using a map. So they've got some basic topo map symbols. And then on the back, they've got determining distance traveled, using UTM with GPS and topo map. On the back, they've got more of these ground to air distress signals. It seems like with SE, whenever they've got some spare space on anything, they put these ground to air distress signals by default which is not a bad thing. Then they've got a tangent table. Then they've got a card about using basic trigonometry to determine approximate distance across a river. Then they've got these transparent overlays 
You probably can't see these very well, but they have various scales on them and so forth. There's a magnetic declination correction card. So all of these are handy when using a map. Now, I'm not going to lie. I am not an expert at using a map. I know enough to be dangerous. I know how to get my bearings and triangulate to find where I am, but I am not the world's leading expert in using a map. But if you have some basic skills in using a map and you had this kit with you between these cards and the compass and the lights and so forth, you'd be in pretty good shape. After that, we've got another set of cards. Boy, they have so much information in this kit. We've got information on camouflage. We've got escape and evade movements, escape and evasion tips. Then, oh, of course, more ground to air signals and Morse code. Got more about calculating distance. And then we've got some basic traps and snares. Not bad. And then we've got this card that has basic navigation tips, basic survival tips, fire building, and water. And then again, they've got some measurement conversions down here. So lots of information in this kit. Right here, we've got a pencil to go with that right in the rain pad. And then we've got some Kevlar trip wire, 75 feet, 80 pound test. And then lastly, we've got this orange flag tape. So this is basically just a long orange streamer. And you could use this to mark a trail or mark your location so that you can find it again or so that others can find you. And then of course we have the mess tin itself and because it has this fold out handle it means it's going to be great for boiling water or cooking food or anything else you might need it for. Very cool. So here we have the entire contents of the kit and I do want to make a few additions to this kit before it's all said and done. But before we do that I want to talk once again about the price of this kit. Like I said it's $200. And I'm sure some people are going to say, oh, that's a ripoff. There's no way that thing should cost $200. Why, this duct tape, you could get this for three cents. Well, actually, that's not true. I did a little math on a piece of paper, and it turns out that the contents of this kit, if you were to buy all of these things on your own as a consumer, it would total up to just over $200. Of course, I'm sure some people are going to say there's no way this stuff could total over $200, but it does. On a consumer level, if you were to go out and buy each one of these things right now, as of March 2020, you would spend just over $200, give or take. Of course, the prices will fluctuate a bit, but right around or just over $200. So let me explain how that could be. It's kind of a combination of where these things are made and what quantities they're being bought in. So for example, this is an Acme whistle made in England. It's not a cheap Chinese knockoff. If you go and try to buy an Acme whistle right now, you'll spend about $5 on it, give or take. That's right, $5. Now there are a couple ways you could get a cheaper whistle. You could use a cheap Chinese knockoff and maybe pay a dollar or so, or you could buy a ton of these. I, I guess if you maybe bought a thousand of these, you could get the unit price down to a dollar or so, but I don't know many consumers that are gonna buy a thousand whistles just to get the unit price down to a dollar. So that's what I'm talking about. On a consumer level, if you buy each of these things, you will pay more than you think. So what I've done is on this paper, I've added up the price of these things and I think it'll be a bit surprising. Now the prices I'm quoting are what I found just on Amazon and a couple other sites right now in March of 2020. As I said, those prices can fluctuate, but again, I think you'll be surprised how much some of these things do cost. All right, so I'm gonna do these prices in roughly descending order, starting with the SE Kandaroo, which goes for right at $55. The Victorinox Camper is $25. The SE Mess Tin, if you buy this just by itself, it'll run you about $18. The Sunto A10 Compass is $15. The Best Glide ASC Fishing Kit is $15. The Signal Mirror, believe it or not, is $15. The Right in the Rain Notepad with the map cards on the back is right at $12. The 50 pack of water purification tablets is $11. The Endure Storm Matches are right at $10. The Kevlar Trip Wire, which is made in the USA by the way, is $10. For the lights here, I found a 10 pack for $30, which comes out to $3 a piece. There's two of them, so that's $6. The Endure Ferro Rod is $8. 
The whistle, as I said, is $5. The tinder pack is $5. The duct tape, believe it or not, is $3. I found a two pack like this on Amazon for $7. That's $3.50 a piece, and I rounded down to $3. The paracord, I couldn't find this exact size, but I'll just guess and say $2. The Fresnel Winds is $1.50. The Whirlpack Water Bag, I found a six-pack for $10. That's $1.60 a piece, so I'll round down to $1.50. And then, just to be a sport, I will say that the pencil, the flag tape, the survival cards, and the patch are zero. So if we add all that up, the total comes to, surprise, surprise, $218. Yeah, that's right. So with that in mind, the going price for one of these kits of right around $200 begins to sound a lot more reasonable. Now, of course, you could build a kit like this for yourself for under $200 if you used lesser quality parts like cheap Chinese knockoffs. I keep saying that over and over, but yeah, if you use those, you could get the price down, but then it wouldn't really be a fair comparison at that point because your kit would have parts of lesser quality whereas the SE kit has all name brand high quality parts for the most part. Now, the other thing is that I'm sure SE is not spending $218 to make these kits. Obviously, they're buying these items in bulk so that you don't have to, and that way they can sell the kit for $200 and still make a profit, which is okay, they're allowed to make a profit. My point to this whole thing is that on a consumer level, this kit is actually not a bad deal. All right, now it's time to reassemble the kit. And although I think this kit is pretty darn good on its own, I'm still gonna try to make it even better by adding a few more items if I can find the space. Now, some of these items I'm pretty sure I'll be able to find space for and others I'm just really hoping I can make space for. So in that first category of items that I'm pretty sure I'll be able to fit in here, there's this medical bag. So this has a large band-aid, four regular band-aids, a gauze pad, an alcohol pad, and then a mini med kit that has six Advils, two Imodiums, and two Benadryls. Then I'm gonna add two of these mini glow sticks. These are the kind that you crack and they glow for a few hours. I'm gonna try to add a little piece of fat wood just to make building a fire that much easier. I'm gonna add a trick birthday candle. I'd also like to add one of these tea light candles because they burn a lot longer than those birthday candles. So if I can fit this tea light candle in there, I will do that instead of the trick birthday candle. We'll see. I'd like to be able to fit this mini big lighter in the kit. And then finally, I've got a mini folding space blanket and this one measures 52 by 82. It's pretty big, but I'm really hoping I'll be able to find the space for it. Anyway, let's get busy and see if we can get all this stuff back in there. I had to reconfigure the paracord a little bit just to make it fit in the way I need it to fit. It's just a little bit too tight for my taste. I'm gonna try to see if I can this stuff arranged just a little bit tighter. Okay, wow, I got it all back in there except for the little tea light. There just wasn't enough room for this. And heck, there was barely enough room for that space blanket, but I got it all back in there. It is really tight. This is probably the tightest repack I've ever done. In fact, I think I'm going to do something to help it out a little bit, just because this one little Ranger band is not a whole lot. So I've got two more Ranger bands, and these are going to go around the container itself. All right, there we go. Now I feel better about it. And then we'll put the original Ranger band around the handle like that and there we go so yeah <laughs> it all fit in there just barely so this has been the se large mess tin survival kit let me know what you think in the comments for now that's it i'm eric siegel this is kit bash survival and i'll see you next time hi i'm eric siegel with kit bash survival and today we've got dirt on the table. <laughs> Up next, we've got 
a Best Glide ASC Survival Kishing... <laughs> survival Kishing Fit. <laughs> the next item is a Right in the Rain waterproof notepad. So you open it up. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> 